Peace and blessings, y'all. Back with another classic, True to the Game, by Terry Woods. Quade and Gina were lying together in the living room with the fireplace glowing, listening to Sade, sipping on Alizé, languid from their lovemaking, appreciating the fireplace for more than its glow. Much to Gina's surprise, Quade had a gift for her. Over in the corner sat a lidded box covered in shiny red paper with a silver bow on top. What is that? Look and see. He placed the box on the floor next to her, and she removed the lid and looked inside. Quah, she's adorable. It's a he. Oh, he's adorable. She gently gathered up the tiny fur ball, cuddling it. I saw him, and I thought he was cute. Gina inspected the diamond and gold tag. Gucci? I named him Gucci, he said, grinning. You know, he's a Persian. He's going to have a lot of hair. Qua, I figured that, she said with a hint of sarcasm. I don't believe you. This is so sweet. I got something for you, too. Really? Is that so? It is, she said, standing up completely in the raw. But you have to catch it, she said, running up the stairwell, butt naked as he ran after her. The black pathfinder pulled into the back of the parking lot of the West Point Motel under a tree and out of the light where it sat and waited. Man, what the fuck is this bitch doing? Said Rand. Don't ask me. She your peoples. I don't know nothing. Don't even know why I'm here. All I know is that sis wanted to bring her ass on, Sam said, picking some dirt from under his fingernail. Rand grabbed his pager out of his pocket. No number. He already knew that. He checked for sound and sat on the seat. Give her some time, Rand said. I'll give her some time, all right. Who knows? They might be up there getting their freak on, said Rand. Man, I don't give a fuck if he up there eating her ass. I want the bitch to come on. The scream of the beeper violated their contrived composure, scaring them half to death, causing them to be thrown against each other in an effort to shut it off. Anticipation is a motherfucker, ain't it, said Rand. Man, is it her? Said Sam. No, hollered Rand. Damn, I'm tired. Jarrell got me out here kidnapping motherfuckers in the middle of the night. And what's up with your peoples? I don't know. I'm going to wring her neck if she fucks up. His pager went off again. Why do girls got to keep calling my pager over and over again? I'm saying, when you get to a phone, you'll call a bitch back, right? Why must they do that? Rand was irritated. Who is it? Sam asked. Jennifer. I swear, she calls me over and over and over again all motherfucking night. I went to sleep, the girl was paging me. I woke up, she was paging me. You would think the girl would have figured this shit out by now. Sam just sat there listening to another one of Rand's stories as usual. Man, Rand continued. Don't you know she dialed the pages so much I had to buy batteries every other day? I swear to God, the bitch has to be fucking possessed to page me like that. Rand's pager went off again. Damn, I've been trying to see this girl right here, said Rand, showing the number to Sam. She all that. Is she? said Sam, memorizing the number for himself. What's her name? Tia. She got a beauty salon, ripping it up in Germantown. Now this girl is bad with her pretty ass. You gots to see it to believe it, said Rand. I plan to, thought Sam. Rand's pager went off again. If this ain't her, I'm gonna smack her silly, he said. Yeah, I'm gonna slap her ass around too for making me sit out here like this. Yo, this is it, Rand said. Look at the time. 312. She said she would need 20 minutes and then she would be ready. Inside the hotel room, Simone and Forty was going at it. Simone had no problem making herself at ease with Forty. He was real nice looking, and Rand was right. He played right into her hands. Rand had come to her with that old, I need you, baby, you gotta help a brother out talk. Time after time, Simone was always doing something morally wrong for Rand. But the 20000 he offered her for her trouble was worth it, and she jumped at it like she was an Olympic contender. Now here she was in a hotel room with some strangers she had met in a nightclub. 
Slowly, Simone eased herself from the double bed and tiptoed over to the door. Carefully, she unlocked it. Then she picked up the phone. Just as she placed the hook on the receiver, Forty opened the door to the bathroom. Damn, you're big. You look deformed. Looking, she didn't want him fucking her. Think you can handle it? Do you think you can handle it? She asked him back. Talk now, cry later. Forty stood at the foot of the bed. Meticulously, he picked up his pants and carefully laid them on the back of the chair. He then placed a gun and a condom on the table. He laid on the bed, picked up the remote, turned on the TV, then clicked off the light. Not watching the television, he concentrated on Simone. Within a matter of minutes, he had Simone's mouth wrapped around his private part. He had a thing about his penis in a woman's mouth. He had to have it. And within minutes, he was giving it to her. While he concentrated on neutralizing his high, Simone was surreptitiously reaching for the gun he so cavalierly put nearby on the nightstand. Finally making contact with the cold piece of steel, she was able to slip the gun from the table and nudge it underneath the pillow while simulating enjoyment of Forty's superior anatomy. Not that she could, but he was hot and she was on a mission. Forty was definitely the man you would want to get snowed in with on a cold winter's day. It just would never be in this lifetime and particularly not tonight. Roll over, he whispered in her ear, thinking of some sexual innovation, but was interrupted by an out of place sound which disconcerted him. Can I join in? Asked the voice that was neither his nor Simone's. He reached for his piece, which was out of place. He felt a setup as a hand reached around his throat and pulled him off the bed. What the fuck is going on? Nigga, shut the fuck up, said the voice emphasizing his instructions with the gun against Forty's jawbone. You want to live, don't you? I know you do, especially since you're laying up here in all this pussy. Forty didn't say anything. He wasn't going to. They duct taped his hands behind his back, then tied him to a chair naked and blindfolded him. While Simone got dressed in the bathroom, Rand looked in Forty's pants and in his jacket pockets. When he was done, Rand had the car keys, money, pager, and cell phone. The gun is under the pillow, Simone whispered to Rand as she came out the bathroom. Rand grabbed the gun, and the two of them left in 40's Jeep, while Sam stayed with 40. Damn, I wish this nigga had tinted windows. I know, right? Yeah, here's your money, he said, handing her a bag. Thanks, Rand. Mmm, 20000 I don't know what I'm going to do with all this money. Simone, so help me God, if you say anything, I swear, if you say one little word, if I even have a reason to think you told somebody where you got this money from, I will kill you. You hear me? Rand, I'm not saying nothing straight up. You're not going to have to worry about me, okay? I hope so. Rand parked the Jeep on a deserted side street. Damn, we need to wipe the Jeep down. Here, she said, pulling a pair of panties out of her pocketbook. Rand just looked at her. Man, don't give me your drawers. They cool. I haven't worn them or anything, see? She said, putting them to his face. Yo, Simone, is you out your mind? You need to get some motherfucking help, said Rand. Yeah, don't we all, she said, getting out the car. Rand took the panties and wiped Forty's Jeep down. Then he got out and locked the doors. Remember what I said, he told her as he led her up the block. I swear, Rand, you won't have to worry about me. I just hope you didn't catch no feelings for the nigga or nothing while he was running up in you. Rand, come on. It takes more than a fuck. You know what I mean? She said, looking up at him. Yo, just keep your mouth shut and everything will be cool. Rand, I don't know shit. I don't know a damn thing. All right, baby. Rand whistled the cab, but it kept going. Another cab was turning the corner. Here, wait a minute. Simone stepped out in the street and held the cab down. Rand got the next cab back to the hotel where Sam and Forty. Rand got the next cab back to the hotel where Sam and Forty were, and he let himself in. Sam had put Forty in the corner facing the wall. Why you put him like that? Rand asked. I don't know. Seemed like he not here, right? Man, come on. Why you didn't get him dressed? What and untie him? No, Rand said. Dress his ass tied up. Man, he butt naked. I don't want to dress him. 
Rand looked at Sam with his one and only look. Rand, Rand looked at Sam with his one and only look he gave to people when they were getting on his nerves. Dress him, I said. How am I supposed to dress him all tied up, man, huh? Never mind, okay? Hand me his clothes. Rand pulled the ski mask over his face and ordered Sam to do the same. He uncovered Forty's eyes. The swirling blackness and specks of light faded into one. And finally there was vision. Forty looked around. He couldn't believe this was happening. After Rand untied him, he threw his clothes at Forty and told him to get dressed while Sam had the gun pointed at him in case he tried anything. Forty picked up his clothes off the floor and put them on. He couldn't see his assailants.